Hi guys, welcome to another lesson on biology. Today we are talking about the concept of culturing, or basically culturing of microorganisms. Now what do we mean by culturing? Culturing can simply be defined as a technique of growing microorganisms in a special medium in the laboratory. So culturing is just basically us growing microorganisms in the laboratory. Now, what, what it involves is the making, it involves the making of sterile media, it involves inoculating, incubating, and examining of microorganisms. So the microorganisms that want to culture can be grown from water, air, animals, plants, various parts of the human body. So microorganisms can be found anywhere. So they can be gotten or obtained from any medium, then grown in a culture medium in the laboratory now let's talk about the preparation of a culture solution how do we make culture solution so the culture solution must be prepared under sterile condition that's to prevent to remove all the other microorganisms that are already present so that it won't affect the microorganism you are trying to grow in the laboratory so the petri dish or the medium which you are preparing a culture solution must be sterile so you must sterilize it first then the next step is to boil it and pour it in a petri dish so after sterilizing the the the, the, the culture solution that that you want to use for your for your to, to for your culturing of your microorganism the next step is to boil that solution and pour it into a petri dish the next step is to allow it to cool then you set it into the petri dish so this heat the purpose as i mentioned is to is to kill microorganisms that are present in the petri dish so after allowing it to cool you also use heat to sterilize microorganisms present in the petri dish so that's the steps for preparing culture solution and after that, the material that we are culturing, the, where we are growing microorganisms from, is introduced into the agar medium and covered immediately. So when you are introducing the microorganisms, you must introduce it very fast and cover up the medium very quickly to prevent other microorganisms from getting into that solution. The next step is to place the petri dish in a warm but dark compartment or you could place it in an incubator then you observe and record what you have seen for two to three days so those are the steps for the preparation of culture solution so now let's describe some experiments to prove that microorganisms are found in our body and in our food so let's we'll talk about various experiments we'll describe the steps of the experiments and what they prove about microorganisms being found in our body and in food. Now, the first experiment, so we we'll talk about experiment, this experiment based on the structure in which experiments are written down when they are performed in the laboratory. The first step is writing down the aim. So the aim of this experiment is to show that microorganisms are present in the dirt under the fingernail. So the deaths found inside the fingernail of uh, human beings there are microorganisms present there so this experiment is to show that microorganisms are present in the deaths found under our fingernails so the method of this experiment the first thing to do is to scrape the dirt under the nails they are trying to the fingernails they are trying to remove the they are trying to get tests for the microorganisms so you, you scrape that dirt with a sterilized knife. So you don't just use anything to scrape the dirt. The knife has to be sterilized to prevent other microorganisms from coming in. Then it is placed into a petri dish. The next step is five drops of distilled water are added into the dirt and into the petri the dirt that is inside the petri dish. We add five drops of distilled water and we stir it with a sterilized needle so the next step after that is to take the solution 
and spread it on the surface of a, a nutrient agar mixture inside another inside a petri dish A. Then we put into another petri dish B containing a nutrient agar mixture. Then four drops of distilled water are added and spread on the surface of these petri dishes, the solution inside the petri dishes. And this is like the second petri dish. You know, we have one petri dish that we've added five drops of distilled water. Then we have another petri dish that we add four drops of distilled water and we spread it on the surface. So this is just to act as a control experiment, just to observe two different conditions and see how it looks. So both petri dish A and petri dish B are covered and kept in the laboratory at room temperature. Now, the next thing is the result. So what do we observe after this experiment? So after three days, colored patches are seen in the surface of petri dish A. And while this, when these patches are viewed under a microscope, we can see that they are bacteria. We we'll see bacteria, rod-shaped bacteria in this, under the microscope. Now, fungi and muco are also seen. Now, under petri dish B, there are no colored patches observed. So the conclusion of this experiment is that microorganisms are present in the dirt under the fingernails. Now, experiment two, to sh which has an aim to show that microorganisms are present in the mouth cavity. So the method of this experiment, the processes or the steps, first thing is to take a clean and sterilized cutting swab, then we use it to rub the tooth at the region of the neck or tongue or the cheek. Then we transfer the scrapings into a sterilized test tube. And this test tube would already be containing five drops of distilled water. Then next step is to use a sterilized dropper to turn the debris in the distilled water and so after doing that the next step is to use a sterilized dropper to transfer these scrapings that we've poured into this test tube we drop it we transfer it into a clean plane microscope under the low and high power magnification so after scraping using the cutting swab to get a sample from the mouth we scrape it and put it in a test tube that contains five drops of distilled water then we use a dropper to transfer a sterilized dropper to transfer this water or this solution into a under a microscope so that we can view it so the result is that we we, we view some microorganisms under the microscope when we view this under a microscope and the, the microorganisms that are likely to be seen are enter amoeba and rod-shaped bacteria that's the bacillus now the conclusion of this experiment is that microorganisms are present in the mouth so let's talk about the third experiment now experiment three which is the which has an aim to show that microorganisms are present in the air the first step is to get a prepared agar mixture into a sterilized petri dish then so we pour this agar mixture into the petri dish and we allow it to solidify and cool. So after some time, we open this agar mixture. We open the petri dish that, is, that the agar mixture is found and we expose it to the air for 30 minutes. So after that, we cover up that mixture and we place it in the laboratory at room temperature and we leave it for four days. So after that, we, we take another petri dish containing an agar mixture and we do not open it to air so we do the same thing but instead of opening it to the air for 30 minutes then covering it up we don't open it to the air so we cover that up and keep it for four days also to serve as a control experiment so now let's talk about the results what do we observe after performing this experiment what we observe is that after we open the petri dish that has been kept in laboratory at room temperature when we open the first one that we opened up to air initially we see colored patches 
So when we examine it under the microscope, we observe um, some fungi and some bacteria. And the fungi we specifically observe are yeast and mucor. Then the other petri dish that we do not expose to the air, there will be no patches found on that mixture. So that the conclusion of this experiment is that microorganisms are present in the air. So let's talk about the last experiment that we have for today, which is experiment four. And that is to show that microorganisms are present in our food. Microorganisms are found in our food. So the method of this experiment, first thing we do is we take three petri dishes. We label them A, B, and C. Then each of them will contain a nutrient agar. Now into petri dish A, we place some tiny pieces of cooked yam or other food. So let's use yam as an example. We could place some tiny pieces of it. Then these, these pieces must have been allowed to cool and we expose it to the air for five minutes. Then we cover it up again into petri dish A. Then into petri dish B, we place tiny pieces of cooked meat that have been cooled and exposed to the air for five minutes. Then we cover it up quickly. Then petri dish C, that co also contains nutrient agar, is left intact and is not open to air and is not put and we do not put any food material into that petri dish C. Now petri dish, the petri dishes are kept in a warm place in the lab for two to three days. And after two to three days, we take a sterilized needle and use it to take samples from each of the petri dishes and spread it on microscope slides to, so that we can view it. So smears are prepared and stained. So we find it, we are able to view those samples taken from each of the petri dishes under a microscope. Now these slides are viewed under the eye power magnification of the microscope. We increase the magnification of the microscope to the highest power so that we can view it. So the results, what we observe after performing this experiment is that the petri dish A and B, where we put in the food materials, the yam and the meat, will show growth of microorganisms such as some bacteria and some fungi, while petri dish C will remain clear of any patches of microorganisms. And the conclusion of this experiment is that microorganisms are present in exposed food. Thanks for joining us today. That's the end of today's lesson on co concept of culturing. See you next class.